Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good is the word of the Lord. Good is the word of the Lord. Good is the word of the Lord. We worship you. We magnify your holy. spirit he's mighty in battle yes there's some fights going on right now but he's mighty in battle mighty in battle the Lord is moving now the Lord is moving on your behalf now the Lord is fighting for you now the Lord is fighting for you now he's mighty in battle He's mighty in battle. He's mighty in battle. You shall recover all. <laughs> mighty in battle. He's mighty in battle. Mighty in battle is the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. His goodness shall be seen. His goodness shall be seen. Hallelujah. Mm, I hear it again. He's mighty in battle. Some of you got to stop fighting in the flesh. Some of you got to stop warring in the flesh and just declare, He's mighty in battle. <laughs> He's mighty in battle. Oh, Lord, you're mighty in battle. Lord, we give our, our, our troubles to you now. We give our fight to you now. We cast our cares upon you for you care for us. And we say we can't do it without you, so we need an almighty God, a living God, not a God made of stone, not a God that is made out of wood, hay, or stubble, but the living one true God. We need you to fight our battles for us tonight, Father. And we declare you're mighty in battle. You're mighty in battle. Yes, you shall recover all because he's mighty in battle. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He's a burden bearer. <laughs> He's a head lifter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a chain breaker. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's a miracle worker. For there's nothing impossible with our God. Hallelujah. 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 You're mighty in battle. <laughs> I hear a war cry tonight. And it's God saying, I'm mighty in battle. <laughs> Get out of my way and let me fight for you. Stop doing it on your own. Get out of the way and let me do it. Get out of the way and just say, God, I trust you. God, I need you. God, I need you in the fight tonight. He's a God that enters the fray. He's a God that's more than enough. He's a God that carries burdens and lifts burdens and destroys yokes. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yes, He's mighty in battle. He's mighty in battle. He sees you right where you're at. He sees you in your time of need. He sees you in your time of trouble. And He's declaring to you tonight, 
Get yourself out of the way and allow me to do it, says God. Hallelujah. 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 Holy, 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 holy. Yeah, 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 yeah. The fire, the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire. The fire of God is burning right now and purging everything that is not of Him. Purifying right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I just don't know how I'm going to make it. God is God. I just don't know what I'm going to do. God, cry out. Cry out. Cry out. You never were meant to do it by yourself. You were never meant to carry it by yourself. You were never meant to face it by yourself. I am the one true God and there is no other. I am that I am. I was, I am, and I shall be. I'm the ancient of days. I'm almighty, all powerful, everlasting. Is it too mighty for me? Is it too powerful for me? Is it, is it, is it too hard for me? No. No. I can do anything. I want to do anything in your life. Get out of the way. (laughs) Man. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Get out of the way. Allow me to do it. Stop looking at the problem. Stop looking at the situation. Stop saying, how am I going to do it? How is this going to happen? Oh, look up. Look up. Look up. Look into the hills where your help comes from. He's an ever-present help in a time of need. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty in battle. Mighty in battle. Mighty in battle. Mighty in battle. Your sickness is his problem. Your circumstance is his problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your trial is his problem. Stop making it your problem. Get in the word and say, no, you said that I can have this. You said I can attain this. You said it was provided on the cross. It was provided in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I stand on the word of God by faith, and I'm not moving until I see your word come to pass in my life. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to back down. I declare that you are mighty in battle, and you have this fight now. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Holy, holy, holy. The earth is filled with all your glory. Holy, holy, holy. The earth is filled with all your glory. Holy, holy, holy. The earth is filled with all your glory. (laughs) Moses, God, I want to see your glory. I'll cause all my goodness to pass before you. Glory is God's every conceivable good. Everything that, and I'm here to tell you, Moses saw Jesus. Everything, all of God's glory, all of God's goodness is wrapped up in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's a savior, he's a lamb, he's a lion. He's the bomb of Gilead. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the bishop and shepherd of our souls. He's the author and finisher of our faith. There's none like him and none that ever will be like him again. Your battle is God's. Your battle is God's. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody needed that tonight. That's God speaking directly to you tonight. Because that's not my message. (laughs) Hallelujah. Just keep playing if you don't mind for a minute. I'm finna pull out my broke glasses so I can read. Praise the Lord. 
got to see my Bible tonight. Wes, <laughs> the battle is not yours, it's God's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24 tonight. If you didn't know I was going to read this tonight, you should have because I'm... Anytime the Lord gets me to talking about the end times, it's out of Matthew 24 for some reason. But the Lord is showing me some deeper truths this week. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. And I'm going to be reading down. I'll tell you where I'm going to read to tonight. Verse 14. I'm going to read the whole thing and then preach off of it. Thank you, Lord. Help us tonight. Help us see. Help us to know. Help us to perceive and understand what you have for us. I want to say one thing before I get into this word tonight. Number one, the world is not falling apart. It is coming in line with the word of God. So when we look at this, and I'm going to get into it, but this is no reason to faint. This is no reason to panic. This is no reason to draw back in our faith. In fact, it's a reason to press forward. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See you not all these things? Verily or truly I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Number one sign that the end is coming is deception will be rampant in the earth. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 6. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. We're going to deal with that some tonight see that you be not troubled or see that you do not faint for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation or ethnos ethnicity race shall rise against race and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places and different or various places. Verse 8. All these things are the beginning of sorrows or the beginning of birthing pains or the beginning of travail or the season of travail, which I believe that we are in right now. Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. That word offended isn't like a, what mainstream culture likes to call offended. But that, I'm offended about this. I'm offended about that. But that word offended means many shall stumble and fall away from the faith. We'll get into that more in a second. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Not talking about the world. He's talking about Christians, by the way. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because of the iniquity, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. I want to, there's a false teaching going on right now about this verse, and I want to I get into that in a minute as well. Verse 14. 
And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you helped me preach this word the way you got it in me. Father, I pray that you help me get all the information out. And Lord, help me to teach this the way you taught me. I ask it in the name of Jesus. And I decrease so you may increase. Father, I thank you that your fire is present tonight. Your spirit is present tonight. And I ask that you have your way in the hearts of your people. I ask that you change mindsets. I ask that you deliver people and set people free. I ask that you deposit this word down deep. And so people don't let it go. People will not forget it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I'm ready to preach this tonight. Hallelujah. I first want to talk about what takes place at the beginning of, of chapter 24, which sparks this whole conversation. The disciples are looking at the temple that is grand and beautiful and, and magnificent. It was rebuilt by Herod, and Jesus looks at it, and says, I'm telling you, there's coming a time. And, it, and it's, it's actually approximately 70 years later, and we'll get into that. But there's coming a time where you're not going to see this temple. He's prophesying about A.D. 70. That's when the Romans overran Jerusalem and they, they destroyed the temple and all of... The inhabitants of Jerusalem fled. All the Israelites fled. And the reason why is it, it's because the same reason when you look back in the Old Testament. They re had rejected God and God allowed the enemy to come in and, and, and carry them away. This time they rejected Jesus, the Messiah. And, and the Roman Empire came in and totally just destroy the temple. So Jesus is prophesying what's to come 70 years later. And this sparks, okay, tell us more about this, but also tell us about the times of the end. And so we see Jesus pulls a few things out. First, he says there'll be deception. I'm here to tell you tonight, deception has been and always will be the enemy's number one tool. Deception took place in the Garden of Eden, and the enemy has not stopped deceiving people. The, the, the enemy knows if I can deceive you out of something, if I can talk you out of your healing, if I can talk you out of your victory, if I can talk you out of your position, if I can talk you out of the authority that uh, Jesus provided for you, if I can get you to look at yourself and not look at Jesus... That's what he did to Adam and Eve. He got, he, got them, he got Eve looking at the fruit, looking at herself, looking at her husband, looking at everything but God. The enemy hasn't changed his tactics. And Jesus says, be careful that nobody deceives you. But then he goes a little deeper. He says, man, there's going to be many false messiahs. There's going to be many people coming up saying they know the way. That... And that's the case today. So that's the first thing that, that's a sign of the end, that great deception is going to be across the land. I'm here to tell you, it's not just with religion. It's just in everyday life. You don't know what to believe anymore. And if you don't know God, and if you, if you don't know the Word, and can't discern the times that we're living in, you can be, de be deceived very easily. So deception, honestly, in my opinion, is running rampant right now. I'm, I'm, before I go any further, I want to say this. Every generation before us, every person that's lived since Jesus ascended up in the cloud until now, 
Every single uh, body of believers that has lived and died on this planet since Jesus went up in the cloud has seen one or two of the signs that point to the end. There, there's been signs that point to the end all throughout history since Jesus went up and left, left this earth to his church. However, to my knowledge... There has been no generation prior to this generation that's alive. And when I say this generation, I'm not talking about age right now. I'm talking about the body of Christ that's alive today in this time, in this season. So let me word it that way. The, the body of Christ that's alive right now. There has never been, from our predecessors, there's never been a time like this that not just one or two of the signs have been evident, but what I'm about to read you, every sign of the end that I'm about to read you is going on right now. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Number one is deception. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. I know I reach for it and then I come up here. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. Devil, you are a liar. <coughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to get this word out. Thank you, Jesus. I come against this in the name of Jesus. The second one is, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Let me read to you the wars that are going on right now. We all know the big one, Russia and Ukraine. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But there's... <coughs> There's war going on right now in Afghanistan, Yemen, Miramar, and Ethiopia. <clears throat> Man, I come against this. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks, man. <laughs> it ain't an Oreo, Jessica said. Clowning me from this morning. The rumors, the rumors of war. So Jesus said a sign of the end would be deception, which we have right now, wars. I just named off to you one, two, three, four, five wars going on right now. Rumors of wars, that's people talking about wars starting up. China and Taiwan, that's a rumor of war going on. Russia and the U.S. Russia just announced this week that they're, they're looking to invade Alaska and take it back. I like to see them do it, but... Uh, Israel and Iran. Iran, Syria... In Russia also are on the northern border of Israel. I just told you what the Lord showed me in a dream this, this morning in service. I see, I see, very soon I see Israel going to war with first Iran and then Iran's allies coming against Israel. I see I seen in the dream I want to go a little deeper into it now. Israel was fortified in my dream. Had armor on. You know what I thought was so funny is the moon is a type of Israel. And this year Hollywood 
released a movie called Moonfall. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but it depicted the moon as, as like a, a space station, and it had all this armor and all this and all these defense systems and everything. And I thought, you know what? Whoever made this isn't far from God's pr prophetic timeline for right now. They're off, but, it, yeah, they're not far from it. I think by the end of the year, we'll see Israel at war. When that takes place, things are going to start ramping up very quickly in God's timeline. So, we have these... These wars and rumors of wars. Then the next thing. I want to add, he says, do not be troubled. All these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. So he says, there, we're going to go a little further. So, so far we see that there are, how many would agree, there, this deception is all over the earth right now. How many would agree that there's wars and rumors of wars right now? Okay. Nation shall rise against nation. That is not country against country. The word nation is ethnos or ethnicity or race. How many would agree that there's, there's, there's battles going on between races right now? Okay. Kingdom against kingdom. Now that's nation, that's country against country. And we know that's going on. There shall be famines and pestilence. I want to deal with that for a minute. The Lord had me back in New Year's say that this year will be the start of both natural famines in the U.S. and man-made famines. How many remember the Lord telling me to say that? And he said that 60% of the U.S. Would, would end up being under severe drought. I'm here to tell you right now, 43% of the U.S. is under severe drought. But the Lord had me start looking up global facts. Right now, famine. And this is where people do not have food. And you can look all this up and, and check me if you want, but I... I looked at a couple different sources, and this is the, pretty much the consensus. Famine worldwide right, worldwide right now is at 25%. That means 345 million people are starving right now. 345 million people are starving right now. With 2.3 billion people worldwide facing moderate or to, or to severe difficulty attaining enough to eat. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, hallelujah. Drought worldwide. That means no rain and no water worldwide. 29% to 30%, depending on what, what source you look at, of worldwide drought. 2.3 billion people are facing water, water shortages right now, worldwide. Let's go to drought in the U.S. 39 out of 50 states are in drought in the U.S. right now. One hundred and eighteen point four million people in the U.S. are affected by drought right now in the U.S. One hundred and eighty point nine million acres of crops in the U U.S. are under uh, are experiencing drought conditions right now. 44.3% of the U.S. is under significant drought. 
So let's just take stock in what we've read so far. Deception, wars, rumors of wars, nation or, or race rise, rising against race, kingdom against kingdom, famines. What, what, can, you think we can safely check off famines? Okay. I'm doing this for a reason. Because I'm... I believe the Lord is wanting us to really see systematically that we're in the time that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 24. The next one is pestilence or plagues. Let me share with you worldwide, and most of these are in the U.S. right now. I know we only hear about one, but there's more than one. Plagues in 2022, hepatitis of unknown cause affecting children, listeria outbreak again, monkeypox, menococcal disease, and then of course COVID. All of these plagues are taking place right now and monkeypox they're saying is on the verge of being a pandemic. So that's the next one on Jesus' list is pestilence or plagues. Earthquakes in different or various places. So this year, so far, there's been, of not mentioning little, I'm not bringing up little tremors, but earthquakes of significance, there's been 97 earthquakes. 97 earthquakes this year alone. Not to mention all the other natural disasters that have taken place. The Lord told me, if you go back and look at what the Lord had me say on New Year's Eve, going back to that sermon, He said there'll be three significant earthquakes that people will know that these are the ones that I'm telling about. Two of them have already taken place. One in Japan, one in Afghanistan, and there's another one that's coming. And I'm not here trying to scare you tonight, but we need to know the times we're living in. And then the Lord wants me to share with you how we're to conduct ourselves in this time. So there, there'll be earthquakes. Then it says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. So that says if you have all those things in place... It's the beginning of sorrows or the beginning of birthing pains. What are we birthing? We're going from the end of the church age into the age of tribulation and the age of judge, God's judgment on the earth. Tribulation, I mean, let me go back. Sorrows, when you look at it in the Greek, it actually is talking about birthing pains or, or travail. We know that travail is a form of intercession and and. I'm going to talk about it in a minute, but I believe we are in a season of travail right now where the church should be crying out in intercession and in travail, birthing the coming of Christ. Thank you, Lord. We're in that season right now. Thank you, Lord. Uh, verse 9 of... of um, <clears throat> Matthew 24. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. I know that doesn't sound very pleasant. But Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. And I'm here to tell you that I believe in that we're entering into that time. In some nations, that is already happening. Just look at Pakistan. Just look at India. Look at some other Christian nations. I mean, nations that have Christians in them and see what's going on. I believe with all my heart that we will see that in the U.S. Just look at how, I'm just going to say one thing. Just look at how crazy everybody's getting about the reversal of Roe versus Wade. Roe v. Wade. I believe before long that is possible. 
I believe that we're entering into that time, to be honest with you. Very, very soon. The, the more things begin to fall apart, the more society is going to look at Christians and say, they're going to persecute us for His name's sake. Not for us, ours, but for His. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended. I want to talk to you about that, what that word offended means in the Greek. It means incited to sin. It means to trip up in your faith and to be pulled away, away from the Father, away from the Lord, and, and to go back into sin. That's what that word means. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. Not talking about people in the world, talking about Christians. Verse 11, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Man, it's like double whammy with deception. Why? Because as we said at the beginning, that's the devil's tool. That's his tactic. Thank you. And because iniquity shall abound, iniquity, wickedness, violation of... Of the law, unrighteousness. That's what that means. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. It literally means, and that word love is agape, the God kind of love, unconditional love. It literally means like if I have a candle sitting here and I go, and it's blown out. Because of the this stuff taking place because of the persecution, because of, of people betraying, Christians betraying one another, the love of many, the agape of many will be blown out. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. When you get born again and, and you get regenerated on the inside, God's unconditional love gets deposited down on the inside of you. And what he's saying is, because of these things and because of people being offended and tripping up and falling away, their love shall be blown out. Verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. There's people right now saying that that word saved isn't salvation that that word saved is be rescued, physically rescued, and that it's not talking about salvation. But when you look at when Paul tells the jailer, believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved in your whole house, the word that he uses is sozo. When you look at this word in the Greek, it's sozo. Same word. So I have to believe he's talking about salvation. Those that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. What does enduring mean? We talked about it Thursday night. Enduring means not quitting until you're released of the Father. It means not backing down, not drawing back. It means keep pressing forward in the faith. Keep pressing forward in the Word. Keep pressing forward in prayer. Keep pressing forward in worship. Not giving up. Keep pressing forward and being a witness. Keep, keep declaring who God is in the face of every circumstance and trial. To keep pressing. I know it's heavy tonight, but we're going to get to some good stuff, I promise. It is good. I know it is, but I see all of y'all like, oh, Lord Jesus. But, yeah, that's, and that is, the Lord told me this. There's not many pre preachers preaching this right now. And it's my job to get you ready you're not going to say, oh, my pastor didn't tell me. I'm, the Lord's showing it to me and speaking it to me, and i gotta, I got to bring this stuff up. Huh? Yeah, it's out of love. And I know it's a heavy message, but I would rather face something being sober and being 
made aware of it, then it blindsided me and say, hey, I didn't know about this. Praise the Lord. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So he gives us an indicator of all the things that are going to take place. How, how many would agree with me that we're in the end of the end times, based off of what we just read? We're, we're right there. I don't see a single one of these. And I know I'm not a crackpot. I'm looking, at, <laughs> I'm looking at what's going on in society, and I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, man, check, 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 check. So we're there. He gives us an indicator of the end times. But guess what? Inside of all the what I just read you, he also gives us a mode of conduct to make it through this time. I read all of them to you, and I'm about to teach it to you now. The very first one is don't be deceived. How, how are we not deceived? This is your field manual. This is the thing that keeps you from being deceived. I, knowing this, when someone tells me something, I'll be like, well, that doesn't agree with this. I ain't listening to you. And there's a lot of people right now that are preaching a lot of stuff that doesn't agree with this. But it makes people feel good. It, makes, it tickles people's ears. It makes them feel good about their sin. It makes them feel good about the, the, the times we're living in. And so they eat it up. But if it doesn't line up with the unconditional word of God, then I don't want to hear it. However... The times that we're living in, too, I've shared this stat with you before. A couple of years ago, 62% of Christians did not believe in the Word of God. As of this year, people being polled, it's believed that 82% of Christians in the U.S. do not believe in the Word of God. So then guess what? That tells me. 82% of Christians either are already deceived or fixing to get deceived. It, it is your responsibility to know this word. Yes, it's my responsibility to teach it to you, but when I teach you something, you better go and read it for yourself so you know that I'm telling you the truth. You better know it backwards and forwards and forwards and backwards and sideways and every other way. You better know this word. Because if you don't know it, you'll get deceived. But if you make this your substance, if you make this your life, there's even preachers right now saying you don't want to make the word of God an idol. Away with that nonsense. Follow the spirit. Don't listen to the word. Don't read the word. I've heard it. I don't agree with it. This is... The truth. This is the living word of God. My words are spirit and they are life. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will remain. You got to know this word. How many want to be deceived? Raise your hand. Anybody want to be deceived? You better know this word. This is what's going to keep you from being deceived. Number two, Jesus said, do not be troubled or, or do not faint. Do not be in turmoil. Do not be alarmed. Don't panic. When you see all these, all these things take place, rejoice. Why should we rejoice? Because he warned us about it. And he's, he's that good of a king that he says, hey, this stuff's going to take place. Don't put your focus on it. Keep your focus on me. Keep your, keep your attention on me. Don't, don't, don't let this draw you back. In other words, many people are going to see, the, see this stuff, and they already are, and they're quitting the faith. Now, my brothers and sisters, are, is not the time to quit the faith. Now's the time to press in the faith. 
Now, now's the time to say, man, I'm not letting go of God's word. I'm not letting go of God's promises. I'm not letting go of fellowship with one another. I'm going to be united. I'm not, I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going to listen to my flesh. Huh? Yeah. I know I haven't even gotten in all that. I think I'm going to preach that next Sunday night. There's so much meat in Matthew 24. I can't get it all out in one night. We're taking it in little hunks. But we are in the times of Noah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Don't be troubled. Don't faint. Don't back up. Now's, now's the time to say, you know what? Listen, it's in Hebrews. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, as some may do, especially when that day comes. Guess what? We're in that day. There's a reason why, there's a reason why we, we have, when a bunch of churches are just going to one or two services a week, there's a reason why we have Sunday morning and Sunday night. There's a reason why we have Wednesday night prayer, and then we have Thursday night live more preaching and then we have then we have classes on Thursday and then we have Sunday school classes on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Spanish and English and then we have prayer in the park there's a reason why because you ought to be able to assemble yourself to one of those meetings and as long as I'm still here and he I haven't heard that trumpet and gone up I'm going to make it, this place available for believers to come to and to learn and to be be upheld and to love one another and help and pray for one another. That's the times we're living in. I see a time where, where do you want me to say that? I see a time when, when we're, we're, all we're going to have is one another. We not, might not even be in this place. We might be meeting underground somewhere. But I see a time when that's all we're going to have is one another. You better get used to each other now. Yeah, I know. This isn't a bleak thing. This is, this is really, this is how you're to conduct yourself. Don't be deceived. Don't, don't faint. Don't, don't, don't draw back. Don't, don't forsake one another. Ver, the number three thing to do, be burdened with, with, with what burdens God. Be an intercessor. Be a travailer. Cry out. What does that look like? When I see something going on, I don't, oh, I'm throwing my hands at this world's going to hell. No, I see people that are being deceived and dying and going to hell themselves. I need to pray for those people. Right now, the body of Christ ought to be at a place of intercession like it's never been before. When you go back and look in the book of Acts, and I'm telling you, we're in a time greater than the book of Acts. When you go and look at the book of Acts, every single one of them were in constant state of intercession for the times they were living in. I'm going to tell you, we don't have enough prayer meetings for the time we're living in. We really don't. Wow, he's talking to me right now about something. We don't have enough prayer meetings. Man, Pastor, you got us praying a couple times a week already. Man, I think we just seen where we're at right now in God's timeline. We, we are to pray. We are to intercede. We are to, to birth through travail this next age that's coming. That takes people saying, you know what, I... I I know I'm tired, but I'm going to pray. Be, 
Be burdened with what burdens God. The fourth thing, don't allow yourself to be offended or or enticed into sin. Don't trip up. There's all kinds of things that are going to be thrown at you. There already are being thrown at you. Now is not the time to waver. Yes, I get it. Sometimes we make mistakes. Take it to him, confess, ask him to forgive you. He's faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness, the Bible says. But you know what? Keep your eyes fixed on him and say, I'm not going back to how I used to live. I'm not going back to the way I lived. I'm not going back to to what the enemy wants me to be in. I'm moving forward in the things of God. I'm moving forward in the purposes of God. I'm moving forward in my destiny. I'm moving forward in my calling. I'm moving forward in his plans and purposes for my life. Don't get tripped up. Don't allow yourself to be deceived. Don't allow yourself to fall back. We're... we're, I believe with all my heart we're either at the end of the third quarter, the beginning of the fourth, or we're in the fourth quarter already. Now's the time to dig deep. Now's the time not to quit. Now's the time to press forward. Yeah, Pastor Jessica said, it seems like time's even moving faster. really does. And honestly, it seems like every day, Something else is popping off that's in the Bible. (laughs) Don't, 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 don't get offended. Don't, don't quit the faith. Don't back down. Press. Sometimes I don't feel like praying, Pastor. Sometimes I don't feel like coming to church, Pastor. Some, man, if this doesn't sober you up and say, man, give you a resolve to like, man, I don't care what takes place. I got to get with the people of God. I got to get in the house of God. I got to get in my secret place. I got to get into prayer. I got to get into worship. If this doesn't motivate you, I don't know what will. And I'm not, man, please hear my heart. It's like Blanca said a while ago, I'm doing this in love right now. But I'm here to tell you, if you don't apply these things to your life, you'll be one of the ones that fall away. Those that are watching, those that are here. I'm, I'm telling you, this, what I sense in the spirit, the seriousness of these times that we're living in, I'm telling you the truth. If you, if you don't apply these things to your life, you'll be one of the ones that fall away. And man, I would hate to see it. I really would. But more than me hating to see it, God would hate to see it. He wishes none should perish. He wishes none. And and I'm going to be honest with you. When I read this, when it says that the love of many shall wax cold, shall be blown out. I I don't see salvation in that. He's pretty clear too. Those that endure to the end shall be saved. And I'm telling you, look the word up for yourself. Please look it up. It's sozo. And it's the same word in all the other passages of Scripture where it's talking about being born again or saved. That's the word, sozo. I don't see a distinction there. Now is the time more than ever to to press into the things of God and to get to know God. Become intimate with the Father. Have a relationship with him like never before. That alone, man, I'm, this is from the Holy Ghost. Your intimacy with the Father alone will keep you from stumbling. Hallelujah. Help me get the rest of this out. Hold on to your love walk. What do you mean by that? Don't grow cold and callous towards people. Yes, there's going to be people that wrong you. There's going to be people 
that hurt you. There's going to be people that maybe even hate you and spit in your face because you profess to be a believer in Jesus Christ. Love them anyways. Pray for them anyways. Show kindness anyways. Do what you got to do. I'm going to tell you, man, he, he's quickening this to me. David Wilkerson went up and he was witnessing to Nikki Cruz. And Nikki Cruz said, I'm going to cut you up. And I think he said a million pieces or something like that. And he looked at him and said, Nikki, you can cut me up into a million pieces. I think that's what he said. Don't, don't quote me on it. But he says, every single one of those pieces will cry out to you, Jesus loves you. That's the attitude that we need to have in this hour. You're going to encounter more and more as people lose jobs, as people are becoming hungry, as there's a lack in, in food and the supply chain and the economy crashes and all these things. You're going to encounter people that just absolutely hate you. Love them anyways. I don't know if I could do that. Practice that love walk now. So when you get to these times, these harder times, you can walk in that love walk then. We, we're, we're learning about in our Sunday morning services, we're learning what, what they call the Beatitudes. I don't think it's Beatitudes, I think it's Kingdom Attitudes. But we're learning to be merciful. We're learning, we're learning to, to show love and to show kindness and to be desperate for God. We're learning all those things, to be meek. I know people hate that word meek, but now's the hour that you need to, need to submit to his mission. Submission means submitting to the mission. Now's the hour to submit to his mission. His mission has been and always will be love. Paul said, I, I can prophesy, I can know all mysteries, I can sing with tongues of angels, and if I have not love, he says, I'm making noise. I'm a sounding gong and a tingling cymbal. I'm just making noise. I'm here to tell you tonight, you can hallelujah, praise the Lord, shikamonosai, all you want, but if you're not loving your neighbor, then you're just making noise. And now is the time more than ever to get a hold of your love walk and show everybody that you come in contact with that Jesus loves them through your life. Your actions preach louder than any sermon. Grab a hold of love and love people unconditionally. Yeah, you stink, but I love you. Yeah, you... Yeah, you... Yeah, you're a mess, but I love you. Yeah, you talk about me, but I love you. Yeah, you ostracize me, but I love you. I'm, I'm having to tell you, God's tested me this year, and my wife can tell you, and those that are close to me can tell you, God's tested me in my love walk this year. And I'm here to tell you, I'm so thankful that if it was me 10 years ago, no, sir. I wouldn't be loving people the way I am now. But I, I'm, I'm, we got to realize something. Now more than ever. Sometimes I think we misunderstand Paul and what he's saying in, a, in, a, in Ephesians. So many of us look, oh, I'm in a battle with principalities and powers. No, what he's saying is you're not in a battle with the person. You're in battle with the spirit that's driving the person. And guess what? God's won the victory over the Spirit. Colossians says that He's a defeated foe. And so I don't hate the person. I come against the enemy with, in prayer and in authority that Jesus has given me. You got you to gotta walk in love in these end times if you want to make it. Hold on to your love walk. Endure. I know I hit on it. Have a heart of a finisher. Come hell or high water, I'm going all the way with Jesus.
Come tribulation, come famine, come persecution or nakedness or peril or sword. I'm going all the way with Jesus. I'm not stopping. I'm not quitting. I'm not backing down. I'm not going to whimper in a corner and be like, why does this happen to me? I'm going to say, this is the season I'm living in. This is the time I'm living in. And I'm pressing forward in faith. I'm pressing forward in the anointing. I'm pressing forward in the word. I'm pressing forward in the worship. And I'm not going to quit. Every single one of you in the days ahead are going to be tempted to quit at one point or another. Mark my words. The things that are coming upon this planet now are going to make people want to draw up and quit. I said it this morning and I'm saying it again. Away with getting back to normal. You hear everybody, we're going to, we just need to get back to normal. Everything's going to be all right. And then you hear, oh, this is the new normal. No, every day is going to be something, everything's speeding up so quick right now. When do you think he's going to come back for us, Pastor? I don't know. But the Bible says that I need to watch. The Bible says I need to be vigilant. The Bible says I need to endure. The Bible says that I need to expect him coming. The Bible says that I need to love people while I'm expecting him to come. That means I can't quit. Don't quit until he, you either hear the trumpet or you're, you're face to face. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Don't quit. Man, I got to get this in you, but I feel the, such an urgency in the spirit. Do, do not quit. Do not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap. You will reap. You will reap if you do not faint. Don't stop. Don't back down. It's easy to be full of faith and on fire for God when everything's going good. It really is. Woo, hallelujah. But when everything seems like all hell's breaking loose, that's when you, that's when you know someone that's serious about God or not. I'm going to tell you, in my, and I've shared this before, but in my walk with the Lord, there's so many times I'm gaining momentum and I'm going forward and something takes place and I get knocked back. And then it's like, oh. And then I'm getting, gaining momentum. I'm going forward in the things of God and I'm, I'm doing so well. And then I get knocked back. And then it's just like, oh, why do I even try? And then one day, I'm gaining momentum, looking forward in that thing that was meant to knock me back, I said, no, I'm not doing it no more. I'm pressing. I'm going forward in the things of God. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to quit. Yes, I might miss it, but he's faithful and just, and I'm going to keep going forward. And you just get a bulldog tenacity and say, I'm, not, I'm grabbing hold of the things of God, and I'm not letting go. Have a heart of a finisher. I started this thing, and I don't want to end up where I started. I want to see what God's going to do, even in the midst of circumstances, even in the midst of trials, even in the midst of the age of sorrows. I want to see what he's going to do with me and through me in this time. I, I dare you. I dare you to say, you know what? I'm not backing down. I'm going to love people more. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to seek the face of God more. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, endure. And watch what God does. <coughs> Rascal didn't want me to preach this message, but I'm preaching it. The last one. <coughs> Determine in yourself to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ, to everyone you can. I'm going to tell you, walking up and saying, do you know Jesus? Have you, are you going to go to hell? 
Man, this is just coming out of me right now. That's not really preaching the gospel. Before you, before you ever tell someone about Jesus, they better see the love of God in you. What's funny is I told the story about the young man that we met yesterday in the park. Well, guess what? Get back from lunch today, and we see a couple sitting under a tree out here. I said, oh, that's nice. People just come and sit under our tree or whatever. It's cool. I come inside, and Matthew's here with Aunt Suzanne. They're sitting out there in the foyer. And Matt goes, Nathan, do you know who that is? Well, it's the guy that we met yesterday that all of us met and fed. Went out, and it was like he was so happy to, to see us, talked to him, loved on him. And I'm like, man, I need to get him saved. And you know what the Lord spoke to me? You just loving on him the way you are. It's preaching a greater message to him. Didn't, knows I'm the pastor of the church. I didn't have to say, hey, do you know Jesus? He's wanting to see, I'm going to tell you something. If you just loved people, they'll come, come to you and say, hey, what do I got to do to get this love? I'm telling you, your actions preach louder than your words. I'm, I'm believing that each and every one of you are going to have divine appointments with somebody to be able to share the love of God and then eventually share Jesus. That young man now knows that he can come here if he needs to. He knows he can come to the park at 3 on Saturdays when we do prayer in the park if he needs to. And really... Yeah, and his dog and his girlfriend. <laughs> hey, his dog ate, what, like 10 weenies yesterday? <laughs> we took a little pack just for the dog. I'm, not, I'm right now, and I'm not bragging on us. I'm bragging on Jesus saying, you know what? I'm not done with you yet. There's, a, there's always someone else I need you to love on. There's always someone else I need you to have a heart for. And now's the hour that we're going to love people and they're either going to receive what you sow into them or they're not. And we can't cry. <clears throat> we can't cry over the ones that don't want it. We just have to, we have to present the gospel. We got to present the message. We got to present the love. And whether they take it or not, that's up to them. Your job isn't to get them, your job isn't to save them. Your job is to present Jesus. Your job is to present the goodness of God to them. And whether they receive it or not, that's their choice. And I don't mean to have a bad attitude about it, but I'm, I'm just like, you know, I'm telling you everything the Lord's telling me to tell you. I'm loving on you. I'm going out of my way to love you. And if you still don't want it, that's between you and God. And I'll still love you, and I'll still pray for you, but this guy has a need. And those that want to be helped, you'll know it. And those that don't, you'll know it. I got to tell you, I got really... Oh, he said, don't say that. Okay. Yes, Lord. The gospel still must be preached. Even in the face of hard times. When, it, when we see everyone going through something, hey, there's a way, there's a truth that you need to know about. There's a way that you need to know about. There's a life that you need to know about. And guess what his name is? His name is Jesus. Start witnessing now. Start, start showing the love of God now. S 
start letting your light shine now. Because I'm telling you, if it doesn't shine now, it's going to be a whole lot harder to shine in the, in the days ahead. This is the only thing I can say that this message is tonight is a wake-up call for all of us. It's a warning. It, it's instruction. Let's, let's just take stock in what we learned that we need to do, and then I'm going to close. One more time. Don't be deceived. Get in the Word. Know the Word for yourself. Don't rely on pastor to teach you the word. I should be coming in and pointing the direction to you, and you should be picking it up and running with it. Don't be troubled. Don't faint. Don't lose your cool. Don't lose your head. Be burdened with what burdens God. Become an intercessor for this season and this time that we're living in. Don't allow yourself to be offended. Don't, don't, don't be enticed into sin. Don't tri trip up. Hold on to your love walk. Love people unconditionally. No matter, don't expect something in return. Endure to the end. Have the heart of a finisher. Preach the gospel. I'm going to say it this way, this way. Preach the gospel in deed and in word. Let's stand to our feet tonight. We're, we're going to continue in Matthew 24 next Sunday night. The Lord showed that to me while I was preaching tonight. How many will say, you got something tonight? How many of you say that you, you, you understand the time that you're living in right now? Okay. Here's the other thing. How many need to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life? Just raise your hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, tomorrow's not promised to us. This is, this is the day of salvation. To be rescued, to be, to be saved, to be born again. This is the day. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you want to make Him your Lord and Savior, I'm going to lead you in a prayer, but it's not enough to just say the prayer. you got to believe in your heart what you're praying and you got to really want it you can you can say 10 prayers i can lead you in 10 prayers of salvation and if it's not if it's not in here then you're not going to be saved but if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that jesus is lord you shall be saved the bible says so i want to lead everybody into prayer but again, you got to believe it in here. Father, I come before you. And I say I am a sinner. And I need your plan of redemption for my life. That plan is Jesus. I accept him as my Lord. I accept him as my Savior. I believe that he came to this earth. He showed me how to live life. Then he died for me. Then he rose again. So I can rise into a new life. Jesus be my Lord. Jesus be my Savior. Forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. How many would say that you need strength for the days ahead? How many would say 
you don't want to be deceived. I think that should be all of us. That you, that you don't want to quit. Amen. Lift your hands up. I want God to just see the posturing of your heart right now. Father, I just thank you for each and every person here. I thank you for the word that you had me deliver tonight. And I pray that it takes root in every person here. Father, I thank you, Father, that you give people the strength to get in the word so they're not deceived. I thank you, Father, that you give people the strength not to faint, not to be troubled. I thank you, Father, that you give people the strength not to fall away and, and go back into sin. That you give people the strength to endure. Strengthen them with might by your spirit in their inner man. I thank you that you give people the strength, Father, to preach the gospel and to hold on to their love walk, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you that all of us, everyone that has said yes to Jesus, the Bible says that your love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. I ask just like we have to develop faith, just like we have to develop gifts, Lord, give us the strength and give us the opportunities to develop our love walk, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let us love people unconditionally. Let us, let us show who you are through our actions and our deeds, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for each and every person here, and I pray, Father, that you strengthen them I pray, Father, that you teach them, you instruct them, and you guide them, and you uphold them with your mighty right hand, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I, I pray, Father, that this message, Father, just gets down in people to where they will not sleep, they will not slumber, they will not quit, and they will not stop pressing in, you, in who you are and showing people who you are, Father. Lord, raise up a mighty army out of this house to be your hands and feet in this hour. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. I just heard it like this in my spirit. The glory of the Lord is your strength. God wants his glory to shine through you. Lord, I thank you for your glory, your goodness to be evident in everybody's life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I love y'all. God bless you and have a good night.